What's up guys, welcome back. I am still buzzing on the Auto Union 1000 SP being down off the jacks, off the blocks, on the floor. I mean, literally on the floor. So we're starting today's episode off with that momentum. So unfortunately, now I have to take it all back apart again. I mean, getting the trunk and the hood and all that stuff off is, is easy enough, but we have to block it back up. We gotta get the body back up off the pan. And we gotta keep on the fab work. We got a lot to do and very little time to do it. We are probably going to work on the rear today and we're also going to take the pinch welds. That's we're gonna start there. Now, I don't know if we're gonna take half the sill. I want to, but we are incredibly low as it is already. Pinch welds are laying flat on the concrete and the plate frame is like, you know, so if we raise the rear, this just gets stuffed right into the ground before we lift the front, so. I have some figuring out to do there, but we're definitely taking the pinch welds. That way it lays rockers completely. We'll air it up, we'll get the lift arms under it, we'll unbolt the body, we'll get the body up, and I've got some more welding to do, we've got some more measurements to take, and we've got more frame to build. So let's get to it. I've got it up on the lift to hopefully gain access to the pinch welds because I need to start taking measurements for the frame in the back. I want this thing sitting lower so I know exactly where the rear tires are gonna sit up inside the body here. This is the first time the body and the pan have been up off the ground on the lift at the same time together. We've got our new frame rails up inside here that we can lift off of. So I'm not worried about taking any of the structural integrity of the pinch welds out. We'll cut those. Hopefully I can get to that all, even with this lift arm here. We'll try to work around that. And uh, yeah, we'll get that trimmed down. All right, well, as you can see, we opened up a few spots, but that's okay, because I think we're gonna have to go up a little bit more anyway, and then we'll just try to stitch weld the rest of it or reinforce it with something. This side over here was pretty rotted to begin with. The bottom part of that's already been gone. And over here is what was keeping the car up. So we got the pinch welds. If you're a mini truck guy, body drop guy, you know that the last quarter inch of drop is usually the hardest one. To get the body on the ground or to do whatever requires almost like a complete revamp of all your work. We've cut the pinch welds off and we just laid flat sill on the pavement. Oh my gosh. It's not usually supposed to be that easy, but it hasn't been easy. We've done all the work. Look at that. Flat out. I think our exhaust is touching now. Oh, we got a little bit more room to go in the exhaust. We got a little bit more. I can't even begin to describe what this thing looks like and what it feels like walking around it with it laid on the concrete floor. And like the tail lights at my shins almost. You know, you're looking down onto the roof.
<laughs> oh, we have room to go. But do we go? That's the question. We've got more drop. We're still a ways off the ground with the pan. And that rear wheel is just disappearing the farther we go. Let's take a look inside. Even with the big tires, we'll have a look to see like what kind of space we have and we'll come up with an idea as to how to start building the frame to the back. All right guys, next morning, I think we've sold the W210. I made an Instagram post back a couple days ago and my friend John from Denver hit me up and a family member of his really wanted it, so they sent me a deposit. And it looks like the W210 is uh, gonna be going to a new home here pretty shortly. They're gonna transport it out to Colorado. Really don't want to sell this car. I really like it. It's really changed my opinion of W210s. But we've got the E23 here now, and I just really haven't wanted to just unload that car. But as you guys can see, we've got so much stuff here. Just kind of overwhelmed, so. I'm hoping the E23 can serve as a good daily driver. It's got air conditioning. Yeah, so we're saying goodbye to the W210. It's been a great car. It's been a fun project. And I really want to thank Commonwealth Classics and Bag Riders and BC and everyone that kind of helped out with this project. Even my friend Sam Bunker for uh, polishing the headlights out. It's going to help fund the auto union and the trip to Canada for Complex Union because investing in merchandise for these shows it's thousands and thousands of dollars, and I'm self-employed. I'm left to my own devices to make this whole ship stay afloat. So letting go of the W210 will help fund the 1000 SP and be a little bit more motivated to spend the thousands of dollars on merchandise uh, that hopefully you guys will buy at Complex Union Roll Call in July. So anyway, it's the next morning. We are sitting on the sills now, not the pinch welds. Okay. So welcome to the inside of the 1000 SP. We are gonna go lower. And I think that's going to involve having to flat pan the pans. See how the seat tubs and the rear foot wells are recessed. A lot of Volkswagen Beetle guys that go super, super low will flat pan this. So you cut this whole section out and ultimately raise it to make it flush with the brim of the actual floor pan. So these aren't touching the ground yet, but we're headed there. I know that to some of you guys, this may seem totally like a waste of time, efforts, and work, but we're kind of frontiersmen on this, and uh, this is the first one. We might as well do it right. We're going to go low. But I think it's going to look good because the rear of the body and the front of the body sit so much taller than the middle of the body where those sills are. I think we're just going to help give it more continuity when it's low. So that being said, we have a lot more to cut if we're going to do that. When we set everything down on blocks, when we use the bottom of this frame rail as the ground, the tires were sitting way up onto the parcel shelf and a little bit of where I've already cut out of these guys. I think this side was okay. You can see how far away from the tire that is but we have to notch up in here. So I'm not gonna take the parcel shelf. We're gonna leave this, because this is actually acting as a good support for side to side, but we're gonna reinforce it. You know, there's some rot holes right there. So we can take this whole corner. This isn't doing anything. I think what we're gonna do is we have a body mount there. We're gonna try to utilize that. We're gonna try to utilize all the body mounts possible. And I'll probably start my rear firewall there and we'll connect to another one inch square bar that I'll frame in across the bottom of that parcel shelf. We'll ultimately build up off of this one inch. It'll allow me the height to frame in to reach that body mount essentially over like this. We'll build some dropouts to reach that body mount and then from there we'll head up and over and we'll figure out wheel well, wheel tubs at some other point. But for now I just want to get a frame built in because we need a we need a false floor here to mount our air tank on but also just have like some room behind the seat so i want to stretch out as far as we can go the everesto subframe that comes off the torsion tube is going to be in the way so as you can see that's about as close as we can get if we're sitting on top of our cross member so a lot of talking about plans but i'm going to start cutting some stuff and we'll start yeah we'll start moving some stuff around and we'll start framing this thing in
All right, so we're working on the back part of the rear cross member right now, and I wanted to frame in like a deck, basically. So the seats will be here, and then back here, I'm thinking this is where the air tank's gonna go, uh, but I'm not positive yet. But what I do know is I want this to be some sort of like secondary parcel shelf. And then what we're gonna do is tying this cross member into the back half of the car to get the body you know, tight again, give the body some structure. I'm thinking of heading up and over the rear parcel shelf, like so. So coming off of this piece and heading up and over or underneath the factory parcel shelf. But what I'm also gonna do off of this upright, just like that, is we're gonna tie into the last rear factory body mounts. So these are the pan body mounts here. We've obviously got these two on both sides, but we've got this one too. This is a threaded mount and there's no reason to leave that unused. The reason why I didn't just run one bar across the back here, which is what I wanted to do. I much rather would have run one bar and then run these guys an inch shorter on the inside. But as of right now, my header is sitting on the floor along with the sills, no pinch welds. The header of the exhaust is like millimeters from the ground and I want to go a little bit lower. We've got plenty of drop in the front. The front wheels are they're up off the ground like they're sucked up into the wheel well. Max at Everesto is sending a one inch engine cradle raise. They make these really cool bolt-in engine cradle risers essentially. Now in a Beetle that requires a lot of work. Your exhaust has to be modified and all your engine tin has to be modified because the whole engine gets raised inside the engine compartment. Well, since we've got none of that and we have to basically build all that from scratch, now is the perfect time in this project to do that. Next week, hopefully, I'll have one of the Everesto cradles and we'll be raising the engine in the back an inch. And it pivots off of this forward mount, the nose cone mount on the transmission, which means this whole thing is gonna till up like that. I didn't want a bar here to be in the way of the casting of the transmission hitting it. And I'm not sure how far that's gonna pivot up. So what I decided to do was box this, box this, and then I ran a piece of angle across this. So the backside is open. Since this isn't structural, this will basically just carry a floor that my air tank will probably be mounted to. So we'll put some sheet metal across this. This didn't have to be load bearing. So what I did was I ran some angle reversed. So we've got our relief of the angle here, right where this casting piece is. And I've notched the front. So we've got a nice notch there, hopefully allowing enough space for that to pivot back. Just enough for that engine riser. I'm just tack welding stuff in right now.
All right, guys, well, I kind of just put my head down and worked. Tried to film as much as possible and didn't even film like all the stuff I was cutting and bending, uh, but just really wanted to gain some ground on this thing. You know, the clock is ticking for Complex Union. And although, as I've said in previous episodes, not trying to get the car done, but I'm keeping it realistic. I just wanted to roll, steer, and air up and down. And I'd like to get most of the frame done. But I am pretty happy with what I've come up with for a design. Uh, plenty strong enough. I mean, I might be going way overboard here, but I'm not a professional car builder. So I'd rather overbuild it and have it be safe and have it be right. I'm learning something new every day. I have for the last 15 years I've been doing this. So I brought these across the parcel shelf to just act as almost like a strut bar to make everything more rigid. Brought my hoops up through and welded to the parcel shelf, connected to these bars. Everything's just tack welded in. I've finished welded just a couple joints, but everything's just tacked in for now because I want to set the body back down and just make sure we're not in the way of anything. Gussets may be overkill, but they helped level everything out. I'll finish weld everything up, but what I'll probably do in the morning is we'll start working on our body mounts right here. And that'll fall right at the base of these. So this upright will provide some load support for the body. And then that obviously connects to the body itself. So I think this is, although possibly overbuilt for what the car is, I'm pretty confident that it'll do its job. Got our first cardboard template pre-pro piece for the rear body mount. We'll see if this is close to what we need. All right, so we're nice and snug. Looks good. Let's pull some measurements here. I'll probably make a triangulated upright off the back here and go straight down on the side so I can leave the front open in order to actually get that bolt in and uh, be able to access it. So we made the third piece, which might be the final piece. And that one's gonna go right back here, like so, just like that. Basically a gusset out of each plate on both sides. So let's go cut these out of steel. We'll tack weld it together and we'll see what else we might need to change on them. We'll leave a little bit of room for some sort of bushing to go underneath that plate to kind of help dampen the ride once we're actually driving down the road. Okay, who's swinging in to say hi? Mr. Rutledge Wood and Ryan Eversley. <laughs> All right, so I didn't film any of it, but my friend Rutledge Wood and Ryan Eversley just stopped by to say hi. They're traveling through from Atlanta on their way to Bowling Green, Kentucky to start the Power Tour, which is something I would love to do one day as well. But they were in town getting lunch, so they wanted to swing by and say hi. So I took the auto union down off the block so they could get the full shock value of walking in the shop and seeing this thing sitting on the concrete. So now I'm gonna get it back up on blocks and uh, finish cutting these body mounts. But it was really cool to see Rut, and really nice to meet Ryan as well. Uh, they hung out here for way longer than I expected them to since they're on their way to Bowling Green. Would love to do the power tour one day in a weird, unique car, but something that's fast, so it's respectable amongst all the drag race guys.
All right, guys, so I've just been putting my hood down and welding. Haven't filmed all of it because it'd just be a welding episode, but we have the rearmost body mounts welded in. There's still a few beads I need to put down on the top when I bring the body down more, but I got the gussets welded in. A lot of it's overkill, but we're here. We might as well weld it. The whole frame for the rear lower parcel shelves all welded in. I need to put a few more welds across here to help strengthen the actual crossbar that the hoops are welded into. And we are just about done with the body mounts, which is crazy. All right, guys, it's getting crazier and crazier. We've got the pinch welds off. We're sitting flat on the sills now. And we're still rolling the front wheel. The front wheel's still tucked up into the fender well. Man. But this has been another huge episode. We've got so much more done. But most importantly, we have a ton of framework done. Really stoked on the rear body mounts. Tires are supposed to be here today for the rear, so hopefully I'm headed to Quick Everett's garage uh, at the beginning of the next episode, getting those mounted up. Um, both of these tires have gone flat too. They've both gone flat, and I haven't taken them off yet to spray them down to figure out where they're leaking. Please cross your fingers that these are not cracked somewhere. Uh, but I really hope I'm not having to go back out to Elliott's in Blairsville to get the other pair of sevens. Hopefully it's just like the seat they just need to be cleaned up better or something. So anyway, that's it for this episode, guys. Really stoked to get a 1000 SP shirt done for Complex Union and then also online available for you guys soon. So stay tuned for that. Until then, I have so much work to do on the booth and all the merch and getting ready for Complex Union. So until then, be well. We'll see you guys in the next episode.